Good evening and welcome to the news roundup for Tuesday, May 2. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments, and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. Guardsman Group Limited resumed the cash deliveries to automated banking machines across Jamaica on Monday morning, following the withdrawal of service on the weekend. Customers across the island were affected on the weekend after most ABMs ran out of cash. Cash shipments were suspended following an attack on a beryllium truck in Albion, St. Thomas on Saturday, the fourth such attack by a gunman since February. Director of Operations for Guardsman Group Limited, Lieutenant Commander George Overton, said that the company held a meeting with the guards on Monday morning and urged them to remain on high alert. Commander Overton said police personnel assisted beryllium guards during several deliveries on Monday, but he expressed doubt that this kind of arrangement could be adopted across the board. Four people were shot, one fatally, during an attack in Portmore, St. Catherine on Monday afternoon. The deceased has not yet been identified. The injured, all males, have been admitted to hospital. No motive have been established for the attack. Reports are that about 2.10 p.m., the four men were at a car wash on Oleander Drive in Brayton Meadows when they were pounced upon by three men. Police said that the three men pulled handguns and opened fire at the four, hitting one to the right side of his chest, another to the left side of his head, and another in his back. The unidentified male was shot all over his body. Three teens, including girls aged 14 and 15, were shot and injured in Grange Hill, Morgansbridge, Westmoreland on Sunday night. The three were reportedly at home when they were shot. The other injured person is a 19-year-old. Reports are that about 10 p.m., all three were inside their home when loud banging was heard, followed by several loud explosions. After the shooting, it was realized that the three were suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the right hand, head, and right leg. They were assisted to a hospital where they were treated and admitted in stable condition. Police later processed the scene and found 11 spent casings. One of four alleged gunmen was taken into custody following a bar robbery and shootout with the police in Litz, St. Elizabeth on Sunday night. A police were said that shortly after 7 p.m., four armed men held up a bar in the community and stole several items. It is reported that a police team, which was on patrol in the area, was shot at by the gunmen. The police reportedly returned gunfire and a chase ensued. A firearm and three rounds were seized. One suspect is in custody. The stolen items were also recovered after the incident. A video of the incident, which has gone viral on social media, showed the three men storming into a bar and the bartender fleeing. The men then grabbed items from the bar before the police team approached the area from 3rd Street. One man is dead and another wounded, following a series of disputes at Eight Rivers Plaza in Ontario St. Anne on Monday. The deceased has not yet been identified. According to the police, at about 2 p.m., two workers had a dispute at a restaurant on the plaza. It is reported that an altercation developed and one of the workers was stabbed multiple times by the other. The injured worker was rushed to hospital and admitted in serious but stable condition. A police source said that shortly after, a man, who is said to be the brother of the injured worker, came and attacked the other worker. Lawmen say a police officer that was on the scene intervened in the second dispute and shot the alleged brother of the injured worker. The man who was shot by the police was taken to hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Investigations continue. More than 400 people have been killed in Jamaica in four months. The latest crime statistics published by the Jamaica Constabulary Force show that there were 106 murders in April bringing the national murder tally to 409 as of Sunday, April 30. This represents a 16.4% decline in murders year on year. The top five murderous police divisions are St. James which saw 54 murders, Clarendon with 39, Westmoreland with 36, Kingston Western with 33, and St. Andrew's South with 31. 
Portland with one murder is at the bottom of the table. All other major crimes such as shootings, rape, robberies and break-ins have declined year on year. Police have charged a man for a last Wednesday's killing of a nurse along Sandy Bay Main Road in Clarendon. He is 40-year-old Christopher Smith, otherwise called Alaska, a farmer of Rasta Corner in Freetown. He was charged with murder, possession of a prohibited weapon and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Smith was charged with the death of Abigail Ellis, a practical nurse from Roswell Road in Sandy Bay. The deceased reportedly named her attackers in a dying declaration to the police at the Maypin Hospital. Smith surrendered to the Maypin Police Station on the day of the incident, accompanied by his attorney. A black on-the-street motor vehicle belonging to the accused was also seized. On Friday, a question and answer session was conducted with the accused in the presence of his attorney, and he was subsequently charged. Police said another man is also being sought in connection with the killing. A legal showdown is looming between Jamaica's security guards and their employers concerning new contracts being offered to them. Vincent Morrison, president of the Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees, UKs, said that the union has hired a team of attorneys to challenge the legality of the contracts. According to Morrison, the new contracts would extinguish all benefits, such as vacation leave, which the guards are now entitled to, following a court ruling last year that effectively changed their status to that of employees. Morrison urged the Ministry of Labour to convene a meeting with the security guards and their employers so that the matter can be resolved going forward. He said the union's lawyers will be doing what is necessary from a legal standpoint to protect those guards who refuse to sign, as well as the guards who have already agreed to the contracts. Most of the suspects held in connection with attacks on beryllium armored vehicles in Portmore St. Catherine have been released. The suspects were released after eyewitnesses failed to positively identify them in a series of identification parades. An employee of beryllium who was detained as a suspect was also released after being questioned. The suspects were placed on ID parades in connection with the February 27 armed robbery of a courier truck at the Jamaica National Bank in Portmore Pines Plaza, St. Catherine. Two guards were shot, one fatally by the robbers, who made off with about $10 million. In another attack last month, gunmen stole $23 million from guards at the Scotia Bank in Portmore. Shamari, a 24-year-old of Fairview Park, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, was charged in connection with that incident. Five people, including four security guards, were shot in that attack. A sixth person has been charged in connection with the multi-million dollar fraud at the Institute of Sports in Sports and has been placed before the Home Circuit Court. Shereen Farquharson turned herself in last week in the company of her attorney. Farquharson, former financial controller Andrew Wright, O'Neill Hope, Rudolph Barnes, Johnny Mills, and Andrea Picton are accused of defrauding in sports of more than $222 million. Their bail application, which was initially set for May 12, got on the way on Monday, May 1st. Attorneys representing the six defendants are to continue their part heard bail application on Friday. Children's advocate Diane Gordon Harrison has voiced strong concern about a proposed amendment to the Child Care and Protection Act, which recommends a term of not less than 20 years before a minor found guilty of committing murder becomes eligible for parole. Last month, a joint select committee of parliament began deliberating on proposed changes to the legislation relating to the mandatory minimum sentence for murder. Gordon Harrison said she would rely on the discretion of the presiding judge to determine if the minor is deserving of such severe punishment. She added that even in cases involving minors who willingly commit crimes, there still has to be a consideration for the individual circumstances of the child before determining their punishment. In business, Sansa International and Norman Manley International Airports generated a combined revenue of Jamaica and $29.6 billion last year for the Mexico-based Pacific Airport Group. 
The bulk of the airport's revenue was generated from American Airlines, JetBlue and Delta. The combined revenue was two-thirds higher than in 2021 and higher than pre-pandemic levels, which amounted to Jamaican $20.3 billion in 2019. In the region, a police station was destroyed by a fire early Tuesday morning and at least 10 trucks transporting lumber were set ablaze as rioting took place in Suriname. Police have given no motive for the riot, but added that at least two police officers had sustained gunshot wounds. The Police Public Relations Department said those injured were transported on the police escort to hospital for treatment. On the international scene, the Biden administration will end COVID-19 vaccination requirements for federal employees and international air travelers on May 11th. The White House made the announcement on Monday. This means the requirement will be dropped the same day the administration said it would end the public health emergency tied to the coronavirus pandemic. The administration is also ending vaccination requirements it had put in place for international air travelers as part of its efforts to curb the spread of new variants. The new travel rules mean international air travelers who are not U.S. citizens or lawful permanent residents will no longer need to be fully vaccinated before flying to the United States. And in sports, Roger Stoner became the second Jamaican to attain the World Athletics Championship qualifying mark in the men's discus throw. Stoner achieved the automatic qualifying mark of 67 meters after winning at the Louisiana State University Invitational in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Saturday. He joined Travis Michael who threw a seasonal best 68.14 meter at a meet held at Excelsior High School in February, as Jamaicans who have made a qualifying standard for the World Championships to be held in Budapest, Hungary in August. And that is your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time. Teach them! Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!